While many in our nation and around the world are struggling with this pandemic, we believe we serve a mighty, powerful God who is not limited by what seems to be impossible. Although this may not be the format for how we typically worship, it is a gift to have technology that allows us to worship together even if we're not physically in the same place. Because God says that where two or three are gathered, He is in the midst of them. So even during a pandemic, we are going to continue to gather together and worship Him, sing together and pray together. We are so glad you have chosen to join us for worship today. Church, welcome to the new season of Lord Reigns in All Nations Ministry online service. We are so happy to have you join with us today. In this new season, let us continue to observe the following. Be punctual and gather your family members and friends together. Share and start a watch party prior to the planned time of the streaming of online service. Online service should be attended with the same attitude with the physical service. Avoid disruptive activities such as house chores and internet activities. Remember, worship time is a time dedicated to God. Be accountable for each other in the church community by checking up and supporting each other. Feel free to drop a comment, greeting, or prayer request in our comment section box. And don't forget to like and subscribe to our Facebook page and YouTube channel. Let us always remember that Jesus is the reason for all seasons. He is the reason we exist as a community and why we have a mission to serve the world, pandemic or not. God bless us all.
Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you once again for this wonderful moment that you have given us to gather in this platform. We thank you, Father, for all, for all the strength that you have given to each and everyone. We ask forgiveness for all the sins we committed to you so that we can worthy to worship you, to praise you, and to give you glory. Father in heaven, let your presence be with us and we pray that you will bless the Hemic members and to those who are assigned today to serve you. Bless those who are in gathered in this platform. As you have said in Matthew 18, 20, two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. Father, send a thousands of your angel to protect this online gathering that no work of the enemy can distract us to listen your word. Father, bless the life of our messenger that you will use today to deliver your word to us. We pray a double portion of anointing be upon him to boldly share your gospel. Thank you, Father, for our brothers and sisters that we are here today, that you touch their heart to listen your holy word, and it will be planted in their hearts. Thank you, Father. This is our prayer in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
blessed day, brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to the Lord Reigns in All Nations Ministry, your church online. We are a Bible-based church and we are lifting the name of Jesus alone in our life. Lorean is just not a church, but also a family and a home that will help you deepen your relationship to our Lord Jesus Christ. So I would like to acknowledge the presence of everyone who is joining us right now all over the world. We are so blessed and we are excited to be worshiping with you all today. And for those who are new, we are pleased to welcome you all to Lorean family. We believe that this is not an accident that you are here right now with us. And we believe that God will do something new in your life. Amen. And for special announcements, our church has different weekly services and fellowships. And it will be flashed on your screen later on. So for more updates, please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow our Facebook page. And please don't forget to like and share this live stream and to tag your families, friends, and colleagues. And by doing this, you can share the word of God and reach more souls grow near to God. And please feel free to leave a comment for your testimonies and prayer requests. Stay connected. God bless everyone. Enjoy this service. Amen. Hallelujah. And now, let us proceed with another form of worship to our living God through our tithes and offering. Brothers and sisters, it's the time of giving back to the Lord. This is our opportunity to respond in the gratitude to the grace, love, and mercy of God in our lives. And this is a way of obeying and putting our faith and trust in the Lord. Amen? Let us read on the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. So your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Amen. Praise be to God for His words. Brothers and sisters, I am amazed how God has transformed my heart, especially in giving. Before, I was giving just what I wanted to give until the Lord has taught me through reading His words and giving me the wisdom, the understanding, and the right heart in giving back what belongs to Him. Amen? And I started to trust the Lord with my tithes. Glory to God. Brothers and sisters, we are not blessed by God to get rich. We are blessed to be a blessing to other people. We are able to freely receive and freely give what the Lord has given unto us be it with our jobs, be it with our small businesses, with our talents, with our skills, not hoarding earthly riches, talents that we have out of greed, but sharing it with others and giving back what belongs to the Lord. Amen? Currently, I am experiencing salary delays and with this notion that the company will shut down soon. I kept on seeking the Lord despite of the situation. I kept on trusting on His plans over our lives. Because the Lord is faithful, He is always there providing with our needs. Our food, our shelter, our good health, the safety and protection daily, for, for our families back home as well. Until I receive the good news last Sunday, brethren. Yes, our company has released our salaries from 
three months delay. Glory to God. The Lord is really moving. The Lord is really answering our prayers. The Lord will restore everything that belongs to His children in His own ways and in His own perfect timings. Amen? Amen. And for the brethren who are in financial crisis at the moment, who are looking for a job, let us continue to seek and trust the Lord with His plans because He will fulfill His promises to fill our resources and meet our needs. Amen? Let me share you a um, scripture from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, verses 33. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, the Lord doesn't need our money, but what the Lord wants from us is our heart's priority. He wants to be first in our lives. The first and greatest commandment, brothers and sisters, is to love the Lord our God with all our hearts. If we seek His kingdom first, despite of our situation now brothers and sisters if we honor the lord with our first fruits and if we bring our tithes into the house of the lord we are reinforcing our covenant of faith with the lord that he is first in all things amen when he is first in all the things that we do he is first in all our ways then he is first in our hearts brothers and sisters and today, let us honor the Lord. Let us bring something from our possessions. Let's bring the first of our fruits. Let's bring the first of our increase. And let's bring our hearts into the house of the Lord. Amen? Father God in heaven, we praise and glorify your name. 
we come to your throne with humble hearts as we are so thankful for the blessings that you have given unto us every day. We thank you, Lord, for your love. We thank you, Lord, for your mercy. We pray, O Lord, that all of us will look into our hearts and act in obedience to your word. May you be honored greatly today as we give to you what is already yours, Lord God. Bless all the cheerful givers and bless our tithes and offering, O Lord. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once again, welcome to our Friday Fellowship. Good afternoon. If you're joining us physically, we would like to welcome you once again. And to all those who are joining us online, we also would like to welcome you and thank you for tuning in with us during your during your weekend. So I believe that God really has a plan why He has brought us all together in this place. I believe that there's no accident. I believe that when God calls you, when He speaks to you, it is for you. So may it be this afternoon, as we listen to the word of the Lord, let us really allow it to be a mirror upon our lives. When we hear the word of the Lord, let's not be side mirrors. What do I mean? When we become side mirrors, we reflect it to someone. Ah, ito yun, siya yun. But the thing is, when we hear the word of the Lord, it must always be, we have to reflect on it. We have to look into that word and we have to ask God, Lord, what do you want to tell me through this word? So it's my prayer, mga kapati, that as we listen, as we receive the impartation of the Lord, we shall really be allowing it to be a reflection. We shall allow it to give us a time to reflect. So before we get into the word, let's be praying. Hallelujah, Father. Indeed, O Lord, this is a holy ground, O Lord. First and foremost, Lord Jesus, we want to thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord God, for displaying your grace, Lord, for giving us this opportunity to hear from you, to listen from you, O God. Father, I pray, Lord, that you hold each one's heart captive, Lord. Hold each one's mind captive, Lord God, that your word will really be heard today in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, O Lord, that the words that we will hear, Lord God, will not just become mere words. It will become a seed upon our lives, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And I pray, O Lord, that this will be a wake-up call. That after, Lord God, after this afternoon, we will really be Christians, Lord, who are rising up. We will not be sleeping Christians. We will not be a sleeping church, Almighty Father. Lord, we will not be a compromising church. We will be a church who will choose to walk in holiness, God. Because, O only holiness would please you. Father, I pray, God, that you increase in me as I decrease. Just use me, Lord. I rebuke the works of the enemy, O God. Just download your thoughts, O Lord, so that it will be revealed to your people today. I pray, O Lord, that you cover me behind your back. Lord, just move through me, O God. I humble myself before you, and I promise to give you back all the glory and all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and Amen. Just before we get into the word, just a short story on how this word came to be. So, like nights ago, God gave me a dream that I was preparing a message. I cannot remember the exact verse that he gave, but I exactly remembered how the outline looked like in my computer. I remember seeing the words and what are the words written there. And so, when I was preparing this message, when I was typing my, 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 the message that God would want to be delivered this afternoon, I was just so amazed because when I was looking at my computer, it was an exact replica of what the Lord showed me in the dream. So I really believe, mga kapatid, that God would want to talk to us this afternoon. He wants us to walk and to live in holiness. So let me entitle this preaching, 
this afternoon as life in the spirit how do we really live our lives in the way that would please the lord how do we really live our lives in a way that is in accordance to god's will how do we abide so let me read the word of the lord found in romans chapter 8 starting from verse 1 as i read it says there is no condemnation now for those who live in union with christ jesus for the law of the spirit which brings us life in union with christ jesus has set me free from the law of sin and death what the law could not do because human nature was weak god did he condemned sin in human nature by sending his own son who came with a nature like our sinful nature to do away with sin God did this so that the righteous demands of the law might be fully satisfied in us who live according to the Spirit and not according to human nature. Those who live as their human nature tells them to have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. Those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. To be controlled by human nature results in death. To be controlled by the Spirit results in life and peace. And so people become enemies of God when they are controlled by their human nature. For they do not obey God's law and in fact they cannot obey it. Those who obey their human nature cannot please God. I shall stop there. So, as we are reading our passage for this afternoon, it's telling us two things. It's always telling us about being in a life that is controlled by the human nature and being in the life controlled by the Holy Spirit. So, we have come, we have to come to realize this afternoon, am I living the life according to my human desires? What drives me? Am I just, am I just driven by my needs, by my wants? What affects my decision? What affects my budgeting? What affects my future plan? Is it driven by the human nature or is it driven by the Spirit of God? Because the Word of the Lord clearly says that if you are living and if you are controlled by the human nature, you are an enemy of God. That's why this is a call for us, church, to make sure that your life, your decisions, your future plans, those are all guided by the human, by, by the Spirit of the Lord, and not merely by the human nature. So we will dissect the passage as we go on. Let me begin with verse 1. This is a very wonderful statement to those who are in Christ. The Word of the Lord says in Romans 8, verse 1, there is no condemnation now for those who live in union with Christ Jesus. Do you want that? No condemnation. But there is a condition. You will only have no condemnation if you live in union with Christ Jesus. If you are abiding with the Lord, if you are walking with the Lord, there will be no condemnation for you. Amen. But then the thing is, because there's a promise that but, but there's a promise in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, which says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come, the old has gone, and the new is here. If you want to be a new creation, if you want to be having a new season, if you want to have a new beginning, there is a condition that you have to meet. And what is it? That is for you to be in Christ. Because if you are not in Christ, you cannot be a new creation and you cannot experience the new season upon your life. But the thing is, to be in Christ is a daily commitment, mga kapatid. It is a decision that you have to make consciously every single day of your life. You just don't wake up one day by default that you're already in Christ. Amen. Being in Christ means living a holy life and living a holy life will not happen automatically the moment you wake up. You cannot be too complacent and say by default today, the moment I wake up, I'm already holy. Of course not. Because holiness is a decision. Just like taking a bath is a daily commitment. It does not mean that you took a bath yesterday that you can skip today. 
I suppose that everyone should do that. In the same way with holiness, it does not mean that you were holy, living a holy life yesterday, that by default you will live a holy life today. It needs a decision. Because you know what? Every day is a battle. Every day there will be temptations around you. Every day the enemy is just waiting for an opportunity to devour you. That's why we cannot be complacent because the enemy is just waiting for a time to attack. It's so sad to note that there are many people already serving God, already preaching. Some are already pastors. They are great evangelists who one day, just that one day, they gave in and everything fell down. It says in 1 Peter 5.8, Most importantly, be disciplined and stay on guard. Your enemy, the devil, is prowling around outside like a roaring lion. And take note of this. Just waiting and hoping for the chance to devour someone. Don't ever think that the enemy will go easy on you. Especially when you're on fire. Especially when you're very committed and devoted to the Lord. Don't even think that the enemy will go easy on you. The more that the enemy will look at you and will wait for an opportunity to devour you. If you will give that opportunity to the enemy, mga kapatid, he will make the best out of it. Because we will be putting ourselves in a very vulnerable state if we don't have a daily fellowship with the Lord. Communication with the Lord is daily. That's why when Jesus was, was teaching His disciples how to pray, He said, Give to us our daily bread. Because you need to, to come to the Father daily. Not just during your Bible study, not just during the prayer meeting, not just during the Friday service or the midweek service. More, that, those are extra. You know what's very, very important is the personal level of relationship that you have with the Lord. Because remember this, a day without prayer is a day without power. Do a power check today. How charged are you? Are you connected to the power source? When was the last time you truly connected? Because many people are running on low bat. It is my prayer that today that we commit to the Lord that each and every single day of your life you would commit and devote yourself to God and you would begin your day connecting to the power source. In the message version of 1 Peter 5, 8, it says, Keep a cool head. Stay alert. The devil is poised to pounce and would like nothing better, better than to catch you napping. Keep your guard up. The message version says, The devil would like to catch those who are napping or those who are sleeping. Because there are many churches and there are many Christians who are sleeping. There are also many churches and Christians who are sleepwalking. They may walk, but they're not, they're not really awake. They may do the routine of walking, but accomplish nothing. Sadly, again, there are many Christ Christians who are sleeping. They are so comfortable to the point that they get to sleep. Check the person next to you if you're seated next to someone. Maybe that someone is so comfortable right now and that someone is already sleeping. That is very attractive to the enemy. A sleeping Christian. Because it's a very easy target. Remember David in 2 Samuel 11 when it says, Then it happened in the spring at the time when the kings go out to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all the fighting men of Israel and they destroyed the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. 
The word of the Lord clearly says, at the time when kings are supposed to fight, David chose to chill. At the time when you need to be in the battle, David chose to stay in his palace, in the comfort of his palace, to chill. David did not fight battles when he was supposed to. He was chilling. And we know what happened because he was so chilled, he was so relaxed. That was an opportunity for the enemy to target David, the man after God's own heart. Imagine this. David was groomed to be the king. He is already the king. He, 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 he slayed a giant. He was, he was winning victory until the next. But that was not an assurance that the enemy cannot find an entry point upon his life. The entry point was when David became so comfortable and chilled. How about us? Are we fighting battles? Or are you just chilling? Let me remind you again of what the Lord has revealed to us the past few months, that God is not looking for comfortable Christians. Amen. It says here, there are Christians who are sleeping because they would expect others to fight for them. Are you just expecting somebody else to fight your battles? Sis, ipag-pray mo lang ako. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you would be depending your life to somebody else's prayer because you're somewhere else, then you're a sleeping Christian. How many people are watching a Friday service? How many people are watching a midweek service? Sad to say, but how many people are watching a prayer meeting? Why is it a struggle to go to a prayer meeting? Because you know what? The battleground is not really on a Friday service, not on a midweek service. The battleground is on a prayer meeting. That's where battles are won. But sadly, not all has the heart to go there because they're sleeping Christians. Lorian, let us not be a sleeping church. Let us be a church who loves and who, 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 who desires to fight battles. Because we are called to be warriors, not sleepers. Again, check the person next to you if still awake. And tell that person, Hoy, Gising, wake up, church. How many people come for a Friday fellowship? 30, 40? How many people come for a prayer meeting? 12 15 This is not to condemn you This is to wake you up Because the end is near And we know what's happening around the world Of all the times This is the best time for you to be in battle mode Don't expect someone to fight for your battles Fight your battles That is you being in Christ And let me tell you this being inactive is a, not a result of spiritual dryness. Spiritual dryness is a result of inactivity. Let me, let me tell you that again so that it would sink in. Being inactive is not a result of spiritual dryness. Spiritual dryness is the result of inactivity. So what came first? Inactivity. Because some would say, Pastor, um, I'm not doing ministry anymore because I'm dry. Pastor, I'm not going to my I'm not doing my devotions anymore because I'm dry. Pastor, I'm not going to prayer meetings because I'm dry. You know what? No. Because you did not go, that's why you're dry. Because you stopped serving, that's why you are dry. Amen. That's why I mean, the backslide. The backslide didn't happen because you are dry. You are dry because you backslid in. So if you're in your ministry and you stop doing that, this is now for you the time to wake up and go back to what you were supposed to do and what you used to do. Because if you would remember, that was the time that you were on fire for the Lord. Try stop doing that. You become dry. Amen. Again, let us not be the comfortable church. 
Let us not be the sleeping church. Church, wake up. Because this is what God is telling us in Matthew 25, verse 5. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. Do you notice? If you are inactive, it would be easier for you to sleep. Try doing gym. When you're doing exercising, you don't feel sleepy. But the moment you stop doing it, that's the time you feel sleepy. Amen? There are Christians who would say, Matagal pa naman siguro babalik si Lord, matutulog na muna ako. Matagal pa naman siguro ang second coming. I-enjoy ko na muna. YOLO, di ba? Matagal pa naman, tsaka na lang ako mag-serve. Matagal pa naman, pwede pa akong mag-repent. But the sad thing is, we know in that parable of the ten virgins, in verse 10 to 13, it says, But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later, the others also came. These are those who slept. And they said, Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly, I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore, keep watch because you do not know the day or the hour. We don't really know. I love how our we have we have training. And I love how our trainer always ends, his, uh, ends the training. He would not tell us, see you next time. He would tell us, see you next time when, it's, when, when the rapture has not yet happened. If the rapture will not happen, see you next time. What does it mean? Every day is an opportunity for you to be in Christ, to be awake, to fight battles and not to sleep. Wake up. You can tell the person next to you, wake up. And also in Romans chapter 13, verses 11 to 14, it says, You must do this because you know that the time has come for you to wake up from your sleep. For the moment when we will be saved is closer now. Take note, it's closer now than it was when we first believed. Take note of this, Lorian. The night is nearly over. Day is almost here. Let us stop doing the things that belong to the dark and let us take up weapons for fighting in the light. Let us conduct ourselves properly as people who live in the light of day. No orgies, no drunkenness, no immorality or indecency, no fighting or jealousy, but take up the weapons of the Lord Jesus Christ and stop paying attention to your sin full nature and satisfying its desires sad thing is well there are people well there are Christians who are sleeping some may be awake but not really doing the work of the Lord but not really serving the Lord because they are serving their own lustful desires may this message reach to your heart because again it is not me it is not me condemning you. This is God's grace displayed. In Romans 8, in verse 2, it says, For the power of the Spirit, which brings us life in union with Christ Jesus, has set me free from the law of sin and death. What the law could not do, because human nature was weak, God did. He condemned sin in human nature by sending His own Son, who came with a nature like our sinful nature, to do away with sin. God did this so that the righteous demands of the law might be fully satisfied in us who live according to the Spirit and not according to human nature. May God really open our eyes. May God really open our minds to understand His Word. Because sometimes, we would say it's so deep that you cannot understand it. It is my prayer that as we listen to His Word, right now it will be God who will open our thoughts so that you will be able to have the spiritual wisdom to understand what He wants to tell us. It says here, the power of the Spirit which brings us life in union with Christ Jesus has set me free from the power of sin and death. 
Therefore, if you abide in Jesus, if you abide and if you walk in Christ, the power of death has no power over you anymore. Because it's the Spirit that is working in you. Amen. You have to realize this. It is because of the work of God. It is because of the finished work of Jesus. That's why we have salvation. Take note of this once again. You are not saved because you repent perfectly. You are not saved because you have a very wonderful and perfect prayer. Because it becomes about you if that's the case. We are saved because what Jesus did on that cross is perfect. And that's what we can boast on. Wag mo sabihin, pinapatawad ako ng Panginoon, ang galing ko kasing umiyak. It's not on the number of tears. It's not even on how dramatic you are. Stop putting the spotlight on you. It's about the power of the cross on what Jesus completed on the cross. That's why we can walk and we can abide in Him. Amen. It says here that because God sent His Son, it says here, um, with a nature like our sinful nature. Take note. He sent Jesus who whose nature is like our sinful nature, but He does not have a sinful nature. What does it mean? Jesus came in flesh so that He too would experience the things that we're experiencing right now. But Jesus was a proof that He did not give in. Despite His humanity, the devil tried to tempt Him. The devil tried to give Him the riches of the world. But Jesus resisted. So that we cannot say, Ang hirap naman mag-resist. Because Jesus was in flesh. How susceptible we are to temptation is the same way how susceptible Jesus is. But He was able to say no. If He was able to do that, which clearly says to Caesar, He had the same like our sinful nature. Let us not make God's, Jesus being God, as an excuse for us to say it's difficult. Amen. In verse 5, he says, Those who live, be very cautious about this, it says, Those who live as their human nature tells them to, have their minds controlled by what human nature wants. Those who live as the Spirit tells them to have their minds controlled by what the Spirit wants. Assess who controls you. Let me go back to what I said in the beginning. What determines your plans? What determines your ambitions in life? What determines your goal? Because you know what? Human nature wants what it wants. What is human nature? Instant gratification. The right now attitude. I want this now. I need it now. Self-satisfaction. Self-centeredness. If you are becoming the center of your plan, of your goals, if you're becoming the center of your ambition, and that's sin. Because when you are the center, when I become the center, that's sin. That's why when you spell sin, it's spelled as S-I-N. I is at the center. Jesus should be the one in the center. Why do you want this dream? Jesus should be part of it. And Jesus should be a major part of it. Why do you want to become like this? Why is your dream like this? Why is your ambition like this? Assess your answers right now. Because if the answer is still you, then something has to be corrected. In Matthew 15, 19, it says, For out of the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, sexual immorality, theft, false witness, slander, those are the things of the human nature. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, it says, 
the person without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, but considers them foolishness and cannot understand them because they are discerned only through the Spirit. Remember, before you really came to the Lord, when you read the Bible, you will not understand anything. And you will find it foolishness. It does not speak to you. Not because the word of the Lord does not speak. It's because you cannot comprehend. Because your thinking, your nature, is still in the human flesh. But take note of this. The moment you receive Jesus, the moment you are baptized, the moment you receive the fire of the Holy Ghost, the moment you read the word of the Lord, it jumps to you. It speaks to you. Because it's telling you one thing. That you are now walking in the Spirit. So every time when we read the Bible and we don't understand it, let's really pray for discernment. God, make me understand. Speak to me, Lord. And it also says here in Mark chapter 7, verses 21 to 23, For from within, out of the heart of man, which is the human nature, comes evil thoughts, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, coveting, wickedness, deceit, sensuality, envy, slander, pride, foolishness. All these evil things come from within and they defile a person. If you would see all those traits, all those characters, maybe all those sin, it's centered on you. Evil thoughts, your thoughts, sexual immorality because you want to be pleased. Theft because you do you want what you don't have. Murder because you hate someone. Adultery because you don't feel contented. So on and so forth. That's a human nature. Let me highlight some of it. And this is the part that I was typing when I was looking into it. This is the same picture that God gave me in the dream. So let's discuss first evil thoughts. If you still have evil thoughts, then you are still controlled by the human nature. Always remember this, Lauriad. Our mind is the devil's playground. If you have an idle thought, then the, the, the devil can start putting evil thoughts in your head. That is why you need to put on the helmet of salvation so that you can protect your thoughts. So it's very important, Lorian, that we protect our thought life because we need to have pure thoughts. Because remember this, your thoughts drive your actions. Whatever you think about, it begins there. Everything begins with an idea and it materializes. Say for example, if you keep on thinking about spaghetti, 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 you begin to crave for, for spaghetti. Amen. If you begin to think about crispy pata, crispy pata, crispy pata, you begin to crave and you will not stop until you have it. So if your thoughts last, 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 you would not stop until you get it. But if your thoughts being deep with the Lord, being deep with the Lord, being deep with the Lord, you will not stop until you get it. It all begins here. That's what the serpent did. He did not give, the serpent did not give the fruit to Adam and Eve. He attacked the thoughts. Be very careful with what you see. Be very careful with the things that you choose to see. Especially those things in social media. They can give you like simple. It may, it may really look subtle and simple. But they're putting in thoughts on you already. I mean, filter your thoughts. Don't allow it to be a garbage can. So, Pastor, how do we... How do we go about with this? Solution is in Romans 12 2, which says, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. That's why God is telling us, you have to think about those things that are honorable, respectable. Those things, that should be the one in your thought. 
when God or when someone would see your thought right now what if what if you ha- we have this capacity that someone somebody else can open your thoughts will you be proud of what that other person will say because you may act holy speak holy look holy but really what's in here amen next murder pastor I did not kill somebody I won't kill somebody but murder is not just about killing it says here in Matthew chapter 5 verses 21 to 22 as you know long ago God instructed Moses to tell his people do not murder those who murder will be judged and punished but here is the even harder truth anyone who is angry with his brother will be judged for his anger anyone who taunts his friend speaks contemptuously toward him or calls him loser or fool or scum will have to answer to the high court and anyone who calls his brother a fool may find himself in the fires of hell jesus did go easy on that anger can be the reason why you would find yourself burning in hell that's why you have to assess right now if you're still in the human nature it's so easy for you to just explode you're just really angry how angry are you you would see something on facebook it's not even you but you but you take offense you hear an unconfirmed statement which you thought is against you, you begin to react on it. You're so reactive. You're so angry. How do we solve it? First, restrain it. Control it, mga kapatid. Huwag yung lagi ka nalang galit. Parang lagi ka nalang may kaaway. In Proverbs 29, 11, it says, Fools vent their anger, but the wise quietly hold it back. It's clear. When you are someone who would easily vent out your anger, you're a fool. Not Pastor John said it, the word of the Lord said it. So Pastor, am I not allowed to be angry? Of course, yes, you are allowed to be angry, but for the right reason. You should be angry with sin. You should be angry with unrighteousness. The scripture does not mean that the wise bury their anger or do not deal with it, but it means that they can control their anger and how they express it. When you restrain your anger, you keep it within limits. You don't just react right away. Second, you have to reevaluate it. In James chapter 1 verses 19 to 20, it says, My dear brothers and sisters, take note of this. Everyone should be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to become angry because human anger does not produce the righteousness that God desires. Be quick in listening, be slow in speaking. Because you know what? When you're angry, you really cannot hear and will not hear somebody else. You are only hearing you. That's why when two people are fighting, they're only hearing themselves. That's why to the couples, when you have a misunderstanding and you're at the height of your anger, keep quiet. When you're in the height of your anger, one thing, shut up. Amen? Let it cool down. I praise the Lord for the life of my wife, who's listening as we speak right now. Because for the number of times that we had a misunderstanding that it's lesser than the, than the fingers on my hand, we haven't shouted at each other. We haven't said hurtful words against each other. Because you know what? When there is a misunderstanding between the two of us, we keep quiet. We keep quiet first. And you know what I do? If I want to express my, my feelings, I type it. I type it in the chat so that I can read it again. And then I can edit out those things that I know will hurt. Because when you are angry, your sole goal is to hurt that someone. 
and whenever you have released the word it would be very difficult to take it back fruit of the Holy Spirit is self-control don't be angry next release it in Colossians chapter 3 verse 8 it says but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as this anger rage malice slander and filthy language from your lips when you deal with anger God's way you feel it and vent it in a safe way talk to your pastors talk to your leaders talk to your accountability partners vent it in such a way that no one is harmed then release it don't hold it in because there will be many people who will not vent it out but they hold it in and they're just like a ticking time bomb that when they reach their limit they break out everything and they would tell you 10 years ago I still remember what you did no. you vent it out in a way that no one gets harmed I mean we have talked about evil thoughts we have talked about the anger also one very effective tool that the enemy uses against Christians and against churches sexual immorality I won't hold back on this in Galatians chapter 5 verse 19 it says it's clear that our flesh entices us into practicing some of its most heinous acts participating in corrupt sexual relationships impurity unbridled lust and also in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 5 it says for be sure of this that no person practicing sexual vice or impurity in thought or in life or one who is covetous who has lustful desires for the property of others and is greedy for gain for he in effect is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let's put it simply. If you are living in sexual sin, heaven is closed for you. I don't want to sugarcoat it. If you are living in sexual immorality, heaven is closed. Not my words. Don't allow sexual immorality to disqualify you. Sexual immorality is not just the action, it's even in thoughts. It's even in the things that you watch. It's even in the things that you think when you're alone. Cut off the soul ties. This afternoon, there must be numbers that must be, del that must be deleted from your phones. Not just deleted, blocked. There must be websites that must be blocked from your phones. There must be friends in Facebook that must be blocked because you have a soul tie with them. Don't allow it to disqualify you. Sexual immorality has been attacking people, not just today. That was the attack he used against Samson. That was the attack he used against David. And let me read what Dr. Budzivsvevsky, it's very difficult to say it says, Dr. Budzivsvevsky. He wrote a book entitled On the Meaning of Sex. He said, Errors about sex cause such terrible suffering. In our day more than in most. The worst is the suffering of those who no longer know they are in torment. For it is simply a lie that everyone is happy who believes himself happy. A slander that nobody is suffering unless he thinks that he is. Don't normalize sexual immorality. Don't romanticize sexual immorality. Some would say, Pastor, 2021 na, no? Sexual immorality does not depend on the generation that you are in. What God says as sexual immorality will always be sexual immorality. Let's define sexual immorality. Sexual immorality is anything within the realm of sex that is outside God's original design for sex. 
What does that mean? This means that anything sexual that takes place outside the marriage of a man and a woman is sexual immorality. Any form of sex outside marriage is immorality. This includes premarital sex, fornication, adultery, pornography, masturbation, using pornography as a marital aid, holding lustful thoughts, homosexuality. Let's not normalize it. If God says it's sin, it's sin, no matter what year you are on. Because sexual immorality is finding its way into the church and this should not be so. Because sexuality is a sacred wedding gift to human beings. Singles, take note of this. The best gift that you can give to your future husband or your future wife is your purity. So how do we go about, how do we solve this, Pastor? Recognize that biblical prohibitions are intended to protect something precious, not deny something pleasant. When you are being told not to do it, it's not to deny you. It's to protect you. When you are being told to stop what you're doing, it's not because you are denied. It's because you are cared for. Ponder the eternal danger of lust. Preach to yourself that there is more joy in God's presence than in sin. And also, you have to realize that lust disables and weakens our capacity for higher spiritual joys with God. And for the singles, recognize that sexual relations are not essential to full personhood and happiness. Even if you are single, you are complete. And do not be excessively alone because loneliness is a bait. You're so alone, that's why you begin to look for someone who can give you that joy. No way. Set rules, create boundaries. If you're dating someone, create boundaries. If you're still boyfriend and girlfriend, create boundaries. Kiss only happens after the pastor tells you you may now kiss the bride. Amen. Ang higpit naman ni pastor, hindi nga ako. So what's the point of telling you you may now kiss the bride if you have already kissed the bride? Amen. And always remember this. When you're at the point of being tempted, there is a way out. God provides the way out. But it is upon us if we want to go out. In 1 Corinthians 10.13, it says, Any temptation you face will be nothing new. What does that mean? The temptation you're facing right now? Others also went through that. Others are also going through that. But God is faithful and He will not let you be tempted but what, beyond what you can handle. But He always provides a way of escape so that you will be able to endure and keep moving forward. Mga kapatid, you can get out of it. But sometimes you just don't want to get out of it. Iba ang hindi kaya sa hindi gusto. Iba yung hindi ko kayang kumawala sa hindi ko gustong kumawala. Kasi kaya mo, baka ayaw mo lang. Let's also talk about pride. The Lord hates everyone who is arrogant. He will never let them escape punishment. In Proverbs 16.5, and in Proverbs 21, 4, the word of the Lord says, Wicked people are controlled by their conceit and arrogance, and this is sinful. How we know that there is pride in our hearts? When you're not teachable anymore. When you think yourself, yourself as better than others. When you do not keep an open heart. When you hate it when people correct you. When you think that you are holier than others. That is pride. So allow humility to cover you instead of pride. Always remember to give God the glory.
the glory is for the Lord not yours because always remember we are nothing we were just handpicked by God there's nothing that we can boast of and if there's anything that we should boast about it is the power of God working in our lives and always remember no true greatness the way up is the way down because let me just read quickly in mark 10 42 to 44 it says jesus called them to him and said to them you know that those who are considered rulers of the gentiles lord it over them and their great ones exercise authority over them but it shall not be so among you but whoever would be great among you must be your servant and whoever would be first among you must be slave of all if you want to be great true greatness is found not in the title true greatness is found in the towel because Jesus when he came to the world he did not hold the title he held the towel and served his disciples serve and not be served as we continue to read in Romans 8 to be controlled by human nature results in death to be controlled by the spirit results in life and peace and so people become enemies of god when they are controlled by their human nature for they do not obey god's law and in fact they cannot obey it those who obey their human nature cannot please god don't fool yourselves you may be doing ministry, you may be serving in Hinig, you may be serving in media, you may be serving in, in whatever ministry, but behind that, if you're still living in carnality and you're still being driven by sinful nature, you don't please God. God cannot be mocked. This is a warning to us. Keep the altar of the Lord holy. Keep the altar of the Lord holy. Don't stain it by coming and putting a face that's serving God but still has hidden sins. If you're still driven by human nature, it will result in death, not just physical death, but spiritual death, which is more difficult because that is eternal separation between God and us. In verse 9, he goes to say, But you do not live as your human nature tells you. Let this be claimed this, that you do not live by the way that the human nature tells you to. Instead, you live as the Spirit tells you to. If, in fact, God's Spirit lives in you, whoever does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to Him. Church, there is no neutral ground. It's either you are with God or you are with the enemy. There is no neutral ground in the battle. So whose side are you on? Because God is telling us if you're really on the side of God, then you are allowing the Spirit to lead you. You don't give in to your sinful desires anymore. More than what you say is the way you live. Let your, li let your life speak for how you are really living your lives. In verse 10, But if Christ lives in you, the Spirit is life for you because you have been put right with God even though your bodies are going to die because of sin. If the Spirit of God who raised Jesus from death lives in you and He who raised Christ from death will also give life to your mortal bodies by the presence of His Spirit in you, all of us will die a physical death. But if you are a Christian, physical death will not scare you because you know that you have an eternity with Jesus Christ if you are secured of your salvation death in this world will not scare you because this world is just your rehearsal because your true home is in heaven in verse 12 so then my friends we have an obligation it says your obligation as a Christian but it is not to live as our human nature wants us to for if you live according to human, your human nature you are going to die but if the, by the spirit you put to death your sinful actions you will live put to death your sinful actions it's either you die 
of your sinful nature dies. It's either you die or your sinful desires die. Ax it out. Anything that causes you to sin, ax it out. Cut it off. And in verse 14, those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. Hallelujah. For the Spirit that God has given you does not make you slaves and cause you to be afraid. Instead, the Spirit makes you God's children. And by the Spirit's power, we cry out to God, Father, my Father. God's Spirit joins Himself to our spirits to declare that we are God's children. And take note of this. Since we are His children, we will possess the blessings He keeps for His people. And we will also possess with Christ what God has kept for Him. For if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share His glory. Saying no to sinful desires, that's difficult. But the thing is, it's worth it. Remember this, to the singles, keeping your virginity is much more difficult than losing it. Keeping your virginity is much more difficult than losing it. It requires more strength. It requires more grace. But the thing is, we are promised that if we share Christ's suffering, we will also share His glory. Don't ever trade 10 minutes, 15 minutes of fun for a lifetime of joy with the Lord. Because as children of God, we should obey God. We should abide in God. And as I say close, even when I was preparing this message, I've come to realize that today we will be celebrating Father's Day in church. So I had this battle in my mind. Should I be preaching something about a father's love? About the Father's Day because it's relevant? And when we were having our prayer and fasting with the elders last Thursday, I knelt it before the Lord and I asked God, should I proceed with Romans 8 or do you want me to prepare another message about fathers? And God just impressed in my heart, proceed with Romans 8. Because this is also a Father's Day message. I said, how come? Because if you read on the next, on the, on the, on the last verses, those who are led by God's Spirit are God's children. Because our Father, our Father loves us so much. He wants us to stop living in sinful nature. Because let me tell you this, God wouldn't find pleasure seeing you burning in hell. God does not find pleasure in that. That's why He is giving you this grace to have a realization, stop living in sinful nature because that will separate you from your father. And being separated from your child is no fun. If you have a child, you would know how, how it feels. Even for my child, I cannot imagine sending her to the Philippines while I'm working here because it would hurt. Always remember, God is not happy seeing you burning in hell. It's Father's Day today. Let's come back to the Father, mga kapatid. Let's obey, let's abide, let's walk, let's live in holiness. Because in that way, we are glued to God. And let me close with this. If you would say, Pastor, you know what? I'm that. I'm that person who's living in sinful nature. What can I do? God is reminding us of one of the most wonderful parables that He gave about the father and a prodigal son. Because just like the prodigal son who used to be in the father's house, but because of his sinful nature, whom he chose to obey, the prodigal son stepped out. He lived the kind of life led by his desires. He was driven by his urges, his impulses. And at first it felt good, 
of course it felt good at first it was fun but the thing is when you are living in the sinful nature fun is not limitless fun will stop fun will tax on you it would leave you broken it would leave you unsatisfied that's why in Luke 15 verse 14 it says he was broke a terrible famine struck that land and he felt desperately hungry and in need he got a job with one of the locals who sent him into the fields to feed the pigs the young man felt so miserably hungry that he wished he could eat the slop the pigs were eating nobody gave him anything so he had this moment of self-reflection i hope that's what we're going through right now he realized what am i doing here back home my father's hired servants have plenty of food why am i here starving to death i'll get up and return to my father and i'll say father i have done wrong wrong against god and against you i have forfeited any right to be treated like your son but i'm wondering if you treat me as one of your hired servants so he got up and returned to his father the father looked off in the distance and saw the young man returning he felt compassion for his son and ran out to him enfolded him in an embrace and kissed him the son said father i have done a terrible thing in god's sight and in your sight too i have forfeited any right to be treated as your son but the father turned to his servants and said quick bring the best robe we have and put it on him put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet go get the fattest calf and butcher it let's have a feast and celebrate because my son was dead and is alive again he was lost and has been found so they had this huge party what the father did he removed the smelly clothes and put on him a new robe he removed that sinful nature and put on him the nature of being the child of god church we have a father who is waiting for us to come home may it be today that like the son you would realize stand up and return to your father so that we can experience the father's love and in Ezekiel 36, 26, it says, I will give you a new heart and a new mind. I will take away your stubborn heart of stone and give you an obedient heart. Let's go back to the Father. Let's go back to the Father's house because that's the place where we can experience the true joy. One that sinful nature cannot give us. As we experience the Father's love, he will fulfill and satisfy every longing that you will have. So once again, church, happy, happy Father's Day. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for making us wake up from our sleep, O oh Lord. We thank you, Lord, for, for, for waking us up, Lord, from living our lives in a sinful nature. We pray, O oh God, that you put on, Lord, your nature upon us, Lord. May you restore our image, God, that we are not slaves to sin, but we are your children, O oh God. That the sin can, that the enemy cannot just boss us around, O oh Lord. Because we can no longer hear and give in to the desires of the sinful nature. Father, I pray right now to all those who are listening, may you continue to minister to us, Lord. Pour out your Spirit on us in the mighty name of Jesus. And God, give us a spiritual discernment. Give us a spiritual awakening, O Lord. That, Lord, you will only give in, Lord, to the Spirit of you moving in our lives. We praise you and we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you all. See you all next time. And once again, happy, happy Father's Day from your Lorian family. Blessed afternoon, church. Praise be to God for giving me the opportunity to testify His goodness in my life. Praise the Lord for bringing us to Lorian church. For this church led us to the Lord. Praise be to God for the people He used to help us to have a deeper relationship with God.
I am Irene Panambo, wife of Brother Jerry and mother to four children including elder sister Diane. A native of Patangas, I was raised through a close-knit Catholic family. During those days, I was contented with my faith and I truly believe that Jesus Christ is the one true God. We always look forward to Sunday Mass and Feasts of Saints. When I went to Manila to study there, Friday was for Quiapo, Wednesday was for Baclaran, and Sunday for the nearby church. I got married, and after having two children, my husband decided to work abroad, and we stayed with my family in Batangas. We never missed Sunday Mass. One night, I dreamt that I am attending, that I was attending the Sunday Mass. The church was full of parishioners and we settled outside. At my left is the Makulot Mountain and I saw in my dream that a big figure of a man was peeping between the spaces. And I saw the glorious face of the Lord Jesus Christ. I thought and it came to my mind that maybe he wanted to tell me that he is real, he is true, and that I should strengthen my faith and seek him more. We went to Manila and opened a bakery business and I asked my husband to come home and help me. My sister, who, who passed away 25 years ago, always invited me to JIL, to JIL Church and my husband is very much against the idea. He questioned me, who baptized you? Where were you baptized? Where did you get married? You are ungrateful. And he would throw everything his, his hand held. So I told myself, maybe it's not yet the right time. Brother Jerry, when he was younger, was a wine lover and loved to spend lavishly in good, having good times with his friends. Then our baker business went bankrupt. He worked abroad again, this time in Dubai, that time in Dubai. Two of my children finished their studies and decided to work in Dubai as well. Third son, who already has a family, also uh, went to Dubai. Diane got married and gave birth to JD. Diane had a third marriage and she got me from the Philippines and stayed with them, with my husband, with the whole family. Arriving from work, Diane would, would listen to spiritual songs, then hear preachings, read the Bible. That's every day, especially at night. So I also, I, so faith truly comes from hearing and hearing. So the next Friday, I decided to go with her to the church. Praise God for the life of Pastor Romy and Pastor Aneth. They welcomed me with open arms and ministered us. Praise God for the life of Brother Ray, Brother Ian, Brother Steve, Brother Rex, Brother Julius. That was September 2015 and the guest speaker was Pastor Lalen. God used her mightily and truly inspired me to continue. And then I heard uh, the preachings of Pastor John, Pastor Rico, Pastor Roy Alvarez, to name a few. So when they asked me what to pray for, I said, I want my family to worship together in this church. After my husband joined us in after a month, my husband joined us in the church. That was my heart's one desire. As for me and my house, we want to serve the Lord. 
I also attended the retreat in Gantut Hotel in Abu Dhabi in 2015. We also opened our house for Bible study and we were baptized and became born again Christians in December 2015. During altar call, my brothers and sisters in Christ didn't ask me what to pray for, for they know already my heart's desire. In late 2019, we returned to the Philippines for good at, magpat at nagpatuloy sa mga gawain ng Lurian Church. Miracle happened. Praise be to God for the life of Brother Jay and Sister Marge Bautista. They ministered Jeff and his family and helped him find a good job. Now my son is attending Bible study and first thing in the morning, his family worship the Lord through singing and my youngest Chan is watching our online worship service and other Bible based worship services. Rejoice in the Lord and He will give you your heart's desire. God also healed my frozen shoulder and helped me recover from a mild stroke kind of fast. God revealed me these verses. Rest in the deep assurance of my unfailing love. Let your body, mind, and spirit relax in my presence. Release unto my care anything that is troubling you so that you can focus your full attention on me. Be awed by the vast dimension of my love for you, wider, longer, higher, and deeper than anything you know. Rejoice that this marvelous love is yours forever. The best response to this glorious gift is a life stiff in thankfulness. Every time you thank me, you acknowledge that I am your Lord and provider. This is the proper stance for a child of God. Receiving with thanksgiving, bring me the sacrifice of gratitude, and watch to see how much I bless you. Glory to God! Truly, you are worthy of our praise and adoration. Shalom, brothers and sisters. Psalms 103 verse 13 says, As a father has compassion on his children, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. And in Proverbs 22 verse 6, Dedicate your children to God and point them in the way that they should go, and the values they have learned from you will be with them for life. Father's Day is a beautiful opportunity to celebrate the deep, God-given desire to respect impress and follow honorable men in our lives. These are the men who have shaped us, invested in us, been patient with us, 
and given us the love and stability we have needed to become mature and competent adults. We praise God for His gift of dads. For today, we are so blessed to celebrate Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to our dear fathers. We love you all with the love from Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, and I love you, Papa. I love you, Papa. Happy Father's Day. I love you. Ingat pa lagi. Happy Father's Day to all of the fathers out there, especially my dad. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for all your hard works and dedication, not only for me, but also to our family. No words can express my love and gratitude to your unconditional love for us. You made me experience how to be a princess, and I love you so much. I pray that God will bless you in all aspects of your life, and may you never run out of faith in Him, and that you grow old in the presence of God. I love you with the love of the Lord. Happy Father's Day. Thursday. Pasensya na ako dito ako sa labas magme-message. <laughs> Ayun. Kung isipin na uh, less of a man yung situation natin ngayon, handaan mo ikaw ang pinaka pinaka mabait na tatay sa buong mundo. I love you. Hi, Papa! Happy Father's Day! I love you! Bye-bye! <laughs> Happy Father's Day, Papa! We thank God for your life. We pray that God will continue to bless you, to guide you, to protect you, and to bless the work of your hands. Mm -hmm. Stay uh, safe, Papa, and uh, always remember that we love you so much. Mm -hmm. Love you! Love God you. bless! Happy Father's Day. I am so blessed to have you as a father. I cannot trade you for anything else in the world. You are my number one model. Thank you for loving me and mom. Thank you for the discipline you have instilled in me. Thank you for raising me and thank you for encouraging me to play instruments. I'm part of Hemig because of you. I always pray that the Lord will bless you all your days. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day heart. I praise God for your life. And thank you for being a good provider uh, to both of us. And thank you for being a great dad. Happy Father's Day. God bless you. Hello, Lola. We miss you. Happy Father's Day, and I hope you feel, feel well and and and, and that well. God um, give you all the blessings and the, and and that God and we Have pray a long to God. Life. We pray to God for you to 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 feel okay and and to get on get in bed and protect get. you from the COVID. And love you. We miss you. Yeah, we miss you so, so much. Mwah! Huggies! Mm. Bye bye!
and 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 give you long health, um, good health and long life. A rainbow for you. God bless you. Bye bye. Happy Father's Day, Papa PJ. I love you. I miss you. Happy Father's Day. Thank you for being the solid hierarchy of our family. Thank you for all the sacrifices sa patuloy na pagpapagal para makapag-provide tayo sa ating mga anak. Maraming maraming salamat and soon, time will come na tatlo na kaming babati sa iyo ng magkakasama. We love you. We honor you not only today but every day of our lives. Happy Father's Day, Papa! May the Lord guide you, strengthen you, and protect you always. May the Lord be and us every day to become a better and caring servant of His kindness. Happy Father's Day! I love you. Happy Father's Day, please. First of all, I just want to thank the Lord God for blessing me to have you as my partner and the father of my children. Uh, I may not say this thing always, but I just want you to know that I do really appreciate uh, some, uh, caring and loving uh, in our family, even the efforts to make us all happy, especially during this time. Um, I remember all that bagay, lalo na ngayon kasama tayo ng pamilya ng mga bata. And uh, I really appreciate and I really love And since today is Father's Day, it's your day, and uh, I declare God's permission to your life. And may the Lord help you to stay plugged in His words uh, and prayers for you to be, become a stronger person every day. And uh, I declare abundance, prosperity, and I'm calling more for having the boldness mainly uh, consumed in glorifying the Lord. I speak of abundance and prosperity so why was why not in this love is our family again happy Father's Day and I love you very much happy Father's Day daddy I love you happy Father's Day daddy thank you for thank you for letting us go to fun places thank you for doing and also and also thank you for everything thank you for all of the toys yeah and thank you for all the food and care thank you for the, for, for for being the greatest father for loving us for loving us for showing your care and love love you guys love you Father's Day to all the dads of Dorian Church and to our dada, Dada John. Thank you so much for being a strong pillar and a pastor to our family. God bless you. Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. I love you. Happy Father's Day. Uh, I declare kay daddy na long life and then good health and then yung pagmamahal niya sa family mas maging strong pa. I declare na mas pag yung mas mas magpatuloy pa siya kay Lord yung mas lumalim pa yung yung pagmamahal niya kay Lord. Um, and I just wanna say thank thank you sa buhay ni daddy sa sa pagkakaroon niya ng good health and sa pagiging daddy niya sa amin. I declare long life. I declare safety for his life. Uh, I declare strength and increment in salary. 
I declare more blessing. Uh, I declare wisdom to his life. Kasi uh, I want him na maintindihan lahat ng bagay na, na pinapaintindi sa kanya ni Lord. And uh, I declare love, more love para sa kanya and para rin sa amin na ma-share yung love. Hindi lang para sa buhay niya, kundi ma-spread niya pa yung love na overflowing sa mga tao na kapaligid sa kanya. Kay Daddy, I declare uh, increment of salary. I declare knowledge. And that's Father's Day, Daddy. I, I declare healthiness. I declare, I declare long life. I declare I declare love, I declare so many work. I want him to to have his work now and amen. Happy Father's Day, Daddy. Thank you. I really praise God for your life, for for making you as, as a as for making you the father of our children. I am really blessed to have you in our family. I declare that uh, you will grow deeper in love with God and you will grow deeper in relationship with God. More growth spiritually and I declare um, God's love will be overflowing within you. And Pastor Rico, happy Father's Day po. Thank you for being a father to our family too. And Pastor Jan, thank you for being the father of this church. Gayun din kay Pastor Rico, we are really blessed that we are really part of this church. We glorify God in a sa buhay po ninyong lahat. Happy Father's Day sa lahat po ng fathers ng Lori and God bless. Happy Father's Day, Da! God bless! Sana makauwi na po kayo dito para magkasama na po tayo. I love you. I miss you. Mwa, mwa, mwa. God bless. Happy, happy Father's Day ulit. Hello, Da. Happy Father's Day po. We love you. Thank you po sa pangmamahal mo sa amin. Promise po, tutupadin po namin yung pang-aaral namin para, para magid po kami sa success din po. Katulad nyo, bibilin po namin lahat nang gusto nyo. Happy, you're the best, best dada in the world. Happy first day. I love you. Mwah, mwah, mwah. God best. Hello, dada. Happy Father's Day po. Thank you po sa pagmamahal at support nyo po sa amin. Promise po namin na pagbukasihan po namin yung pag-aaral namin. Maswear po po kami na you're the best Thank you po ulit. Happy Father's Day. Mwah. I love you. God bless. Mwah. From Wings Ministry, Happy Father's Day po sa lahat ng pastor ng Lorian, especially to our senior pastor Rico, Pastor John, Pastor Joseph, at sa lahat po ng mga elders and leaders ng Lorian. Happy Father's Day po and uh, I declare abundance and prosperity sa buhay niyo po lahat and uh, God's provision always. I pray that uh, the Lord will continue protect your anointing, protect your calling, at patuloy niya po um, i-bless ang buong pamilya niyo po. Good health and may the Lord strengthen you always. And uh, I declare that you will be uh, always the light and the salt of Lorian. At hindi lang mo po sa Lorian, kundi uh, sa lahat po ng lugar, wherever you may go. Again, Happy Father's Day po and we love you so much from Wings Ministry. Hi! Blessed day to everyone. I just want to greet a Happy Father's Day to all Lorian family, to my family. And I just want to greet Happy Father's Day Pastor Rico and to my father, Tatay Dani, Dino. Ayan. Uh, just want to greet us as well yung mga relatives ko, closest fa uh, friends, closest family in my heart. Uh, alam nyo na yun kung sino kayo. And ayan, 406 family and mga, mga
mga kakilala ko dyan sa FB, sa Instagram, sa YouTube, sa Kumo, Happy Father's Day po, at sa mga mga magiging father din sa future. At uh, I declare blessing upon blessing over your life. Strong kayo palagi. Healthy. Ayan. And uh, palagi kayong uh, high in spiritual life. At saka yung faithful husband all the time. At muli po, I just wanna greet a happy bless and blessed Father's Day to everyone. Happy Father's Day, Lorian family. I love you with the love of the Lord. Ingat palagi. See you. Thank you. God bless. As stated in Proverbs 20 verse 7, The righteous man walks in his integrity. His children are blessed after him. To all Lorian daddies, tatays, itays, papas, fathers, Happy Father's Day! Happy Father's Day to you all! Declaring goodness, mercy, grace, and blessings from our Almighty Father, the Great Father, the Great I Am, in Christ. Enjoy your day and may the love of God be with you and fill your hearts as you go with your family and a pastor to them. Praise the Lord for all your lives. Amen. Happy Father's Day po, Pastor Rico, Pastor Jan, pa Pastor Joseph, at sa lahat ng mga tatay sa Lurian at iba pa. Sabi sa Proverbs 4, 11 to 12, I will guide you in the way of wisdom, and I will lead you in upright path. When you walk, your steps will not be hampered, and when you run, you will not stumble. So salamat po, Pastor Rico, sa legacy na inyong iniwan dito sa Lurian UAE. So we keep in our hearts yung mga mabuti at magandang bagay na natutunan namin mula sa iyo. Especially yung humbleness at dedication sa work at job for God's kingdom and glory. So thank you po sa pagiging tatay ninyo sa amin. Mananatili kayo sa puso namin, Pastor Rico, at itinutuloy ang taas na inyong sinimulan para sa Diyos nating Ama sa langit. So salamat din Pastor Jan and Pastor Joseph sa faithfulness niyo sa Diyos at sa mga tupa na ating mga inaalagaan. So in, sa inyong sipag at tiyaga sa paglilingkod sa Diyos ng tapat. So patuloy pa kayong i-bless ng Diyos ng umaapaw na pagpapala sa lahat ng aspeto ng inyong buhay, especially sa health at family. At sa lahat ng mga tatay dyan na nasa ministry at sa mga magiging tatay pa lang, mga tatay na members ng Lurian, God blesses the works of your hands. Continue serving the Lord and He shall reward you in heaven and on earth. So declared good health, more grace and blessings po sa inyong lahat mga tatay. Patuloy pa po kayong pagpalain ng Diyos sa lahat ng aspeto ng inyong buhay. So God bless you all richly. Happy Father's Day. Shalom. Father, praise you for the gift of unity that Spirit creates in our relationship. You place others perfectly in our lives and inspire us as Christians to work together with the gifts that we have been blessed with. When we look at this meeting through your eyes, we see your gifts fostered in us to further your plans. Thank you for the ideas that you spoke life into here today and for the courage of its voice that stood to be heard. In each one of us lies a puzzle piece, one by one, as we stand and speak and work. We see our individual pieces moving into place we continue to st to strive for your will piece by piece until 
you call us home. Bless all of us in this meeting today. Each of us have a life outside of these walls. There are very real hearts that some are coping with and needs of others that we ache to help with and meet. Take that stirring of love that we feel for each other and guide our steps to be faithful friends and extensions of your love to those that you have seated beside and across from us today. As we bow our heads and lift up our plans to you, we pray that you bless our hearts and minds to know we have done well in your eyes. We pray for your assurance that we are operating within your will. Lord, we believe that you will provide for us. We look forward to the ways that you will surprise and amaze us with your faithfulness. The lives that you will touch and the people in this church you will use to brighten dark spaces and lift sad hearts. Our passion for discussion today is fueled by you, our Father, who with the same note of passion created us to be light to the world, color to dullness, life to dead places, and love to lost faces. Bless our work and our time. Guide our steps and our progress. Grant us the power of the Holy Spirit to work together because it's impossible to see past our human stubbornness without you. Deliver us, Father, from the everyday attacks of our conscious health, relationships, and beyond. From what can see coming and would never expect. Protect and deliver us from anything that strengthens, that threatens to throw us off your course for our lives. Give us strength to love people that are seemingly unlovable without compromising our character as Christians. Build a confidence in us that is unstoppable and immovable but guard our hearts from pride deliver us from our distorted thoughts sickness death sadness struggles pain hunger fear oppression conflict and unbelief for we proclaim your peace over our lives through prayer today. Ephesians 6, 10 says, Be strong in the Lord and in the mighty power, in His mighty power. Help us to put on your armor daily, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen and Amen. 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 Shall we raise our right hand for the benediction? Amen. Shall we uh, declare? Hallelujah. And by the love of the Father who created the universe and the great and uh, the grace and mercy of the Lord Jesus Christ and guidance of the Holy Spirit be with you always. And by the power and authority that the Lord has vested in me, I release all kinds of blessings to your life you will never be a victim of any kinds of troubles hallelujah and uh, to him who can do immeasurable and uh, mighty and great mighty things 
more than what you think or imagine according to the power that is working in you so always use the power of Jesus as it is mentioned in Luke 10 19 hallelujah that's why go forth and bear much fruit and your fruit should remain until the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ this is our our declaration with the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit everybody say Amen and Amen